Welcome back to part two of the desk build series. If you haven't watched part one yet, make sure to check that one out first, unless you're trying to do some weird out of order Tarantino junk. In that part, we covered the overall design along with building the entire base structure in detail, but that was then and this is now. So let's get to work. Okay, so like I said in the first video, I'm actually presenting things slightly out of order to make them easier to follow. So even though this is part two of the video, what you're seeing here is the first thing that I did. Actually, that's not true. Technically, the first thing I did was grab all of my lumber from the lumber yard. Not only for this piece, but for the cabinets that Michael Alm is building to accompany the desk, as well as for the project that Sean built two videos back. And I get asked where I buy my lumber from a lot, so if you do happen to live in Southern California, I highly recommend Real Lumber Service. Super friendly, always there to help me load, and always make me feel super welcome every time I stop by. And my favorite part, they don't get weirded out when I ask if I can film myself picking out boards. Or maybe they do, but they don't say anything at least. Also, speaking of the cabinets, don't forget to watch Michael's video after this one to see the drawers that he built to pair with the desk. They're seriously awesome, so I'll have a link in the description. With all the material in the shop, I started laying out where I could get all of the pieces for my desktop, as well as the smaller top shelf that my monitor is going to sit on. Once I determined that, I cut off anything extra that I could keep around for other pieces, either for this project or a future one. And then I worked my way through the milling process. Okay, so at this point everything is milled and ready to glue up. But before I did, Sean taught me this really cool trick for getting flatter glue ups called the in-out method. Basically what you do is glue up your panels and then go eat a burger. But before you do that, you put them together in the order that you want them and then mark each mating edge with alternating I's and O's. Then you can run each board's edge across the joiner once more with the I's facing towards the fence and the O's facing away from it. And the idea here is that if anything is slightly out of 90, the mating edges are going to be complementary angles. And if you don't have a joiner, you could actually do the same thing on a table saw. It would just be face up and face down instead of in and out. Alright, flash forward a few days as evidenced by my desk base, which we built in part 1 of the video, and I could continue working on my tabletop. I started by giving it a very rough sanding just to make sure that there weren't any bad high spots that might throw off the cuts that I'm about to make. And the first of those cuts was cutting the entire panel to its finished size. In this shot I'm drawing out the profile that I want to cut in, and this isn't really a necessary step but I thought that it might help with the video. But anyway, this is going to consist of a 45 degree chamfer on the top and then a 15 degree bevel cut coming from the underside. And this is going to run along the sides and the front of the table. And then all of that's going to get a pretty healthy round over by some hand sanding a little bit later. To cut the 15 degree bevel, we moved the fence of the table saw over to the other side of the blade and set up a sacrificial fence. And this seemed to work pretty good, but it was a little bit hard to keep the piece up against the fence the whole time. But thankfully, because it can only move away, you can just take extra passes to get a nice consistent line. It's definitely going to need some sanding though. To attach the top, I'm going to use some of these figure 8 desktop fasteners. And I use these things all the time, but this is the first time that I've used them on an actual desktop. The next piece to make was a top piece that Michael and I kept referring to as a pincer. I guess because of its resemblance to a crab pincer. And actually I think we kept saying pincer, but pincer sounds more right to me, so I'm gonna say pincer, and if I'm wrong, so be it. 
Anyway, I don't know if you can think of a better name, or better yet, know the appropriate term, but if you do, just let me know in the comments below. I started off with a piece that had only previously been cut with a jigsaw, and since Michael was using the table saw, I decided to use the Craig ACS. I've only previously used it to make plywood projects, so I thought that this would be a good chance to get to cut some hardwood on it. So I started off by squaring up one edge of the board. Then I could take that over to my desk and use the existing base to sort of determine where I'd need to cut the pincer. And for me, at this point, the most crucial mark was right where the shallow angle meets the flat top. Wait, is that even a flat top or a tree trunk? Anyway, this part. After I'd done the same thing to both sides, I could mark a line where I could cut them in half. And again, I did this on the ACS. And in hindsight, what I should have done was skip this step and just cut right on the line at the ACS. Because after I had made this cut, the pieces were just too thick and too small to hold down accurately. So instead, I used the table saw to cut the flat top, and then I had to band saw and sand to the line to refine the shape. Okay, now let's actually back up for a second to just before that. And here I marked out a straight line that represents where each leg edge would be if it continued going past the tabletop. And again, I had to do this independently for each side since there are very slight discrepancies. So at this point, this section is going to need to be routered out. And you could probably just use a steady hand and a router with a flat bottom bit and some chisels to get this done, but I wanted to try doing it with a template on the X-carve. So I quickly transferred my measurements into a digital file, set up the X-carve, and cut those out. Once I had them, I could clamp them to my workpiece and remove the material. So I thought a lot about how I wanted to attach the whole top section to the rest of the desk and came up with a few ideas. But my favorite, and what I decided to go with, was using a domino to cut in some registration holes. Now these aren't going to get glued into the tabletop, but they're going to keep everything solid and aligned, and allow me to take it apart if I ever wanted to for any reason. I started by marking out where my pincer would sit, and marked a couple of domino spots on both pieces. Once I had the pincers installed, that dictated how long my top shelf would need to be, so I took care of that and also put a 15 degree bevel along the front edge of the shelf. To attach the shelves to the pincers, I'm going to use this Rockler doweling jig, which was actually easier to use than the domino here, mostly because it's just so much smaller. And while I'm doing that, let me just take a minute to thank Rockler for supporting my channel. Rockler is actually the first sponsor that I ever had. They've been with me since darn near the beginning, and I use a ton of their stuff in every project. For this project alone, I use their doweling jig, clamps, glue mats, glue spreaders, and more. So I'm going to throw some links in the description to a few of my favorite products. The must-haves, so to speak. So check them out and see if they'd be something that's good for your shop. And again, huge thanks to Rockler for all the support that they've given me throughout the years. Next, I'm going to cut a 15 degree angle along the fronts of what will become the partition pieces that will go under the monitor shelf. And then I could rip them a few times so that they'd fit just right. And to install them, it was basically the same process that I used for installing the pincer pieces.
Details are not the details. They make the design. That's a famous quote by Charles Eames, and it's something that I've always agreed with, but I don't think that I've ever worked on a project that stressed and exemplified that point quite as much as this one did. In fact, for fun, I made a quick Photoshop where I removed what I believe to be the focal point of this desk, the side detailing, and while I don't think it's a bad looking desk in this form, I do think it's pretty amazing how much having that detail in there elevates things. So I guess the takeaway is, think about the little things, because sometimes the little things aren't really that little. And you never know when moving something by even a quarter of an inch might separate it by a mile. Special thanks to Alex Lara, Nick Hutchins, Chris Watt, Troy Atwood Silo Builds, Lucas Rianardi, Charlie Malia, Brian Prusa, Brian McIntosh, Zoe Iliot, and the rest of my Patreon members for all the little things that you do. Seriously, I know that there's no way that I'd be where I am today if it weren't for all of you. And while pledging 10, 5, or even 2 bucks might not seem like a lot, it all adds up and can have a truly life-changing effect. So thank you again for everything that you've given me. And if you want to support the show too and snag one of these sweet 4 eye shirts, click the link in the description, check it out, and see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. All right, see you in the next one. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.